After putting Angie to sleep in the parlor, Genji and the others returned. Thanks. Was she sleeping well? Yes. She is sleeping peacefully. The noise from here would reach the parlor, right? God fucking damn it. That's right. The door is closed, so I don't think it will reach. Angie, sweet dreams. Well then, that's enough solemn farewells. Let us begin the magnificent festivities we have planned for the after party. Does that mean I can get a beer again? When Beato clapped her hands loudly above her head, a white flash filled the hall and its entire appearance changed in an instant. The hall had transformed into a golden party chamber, with gold butterflies flitting about and gold leaf dancing everywhere. Yes, the true party shall now begin. You said it. Okay, the anti-magic toxin is totally gone. Everyone, come on in. The party after the show is about to start. With a burst of applause and cheering, a tornado of gold butterflies rose up in the center of the room. By the time it passed, the number of faces had grown significantly. I guess we're gonna have the whole, all the stakes and, and the Cheester sisters and so on. Join in on the whole party. Yeah, Ronov. Let the witch of the future find happiness, and let us of the past be rewarded for our efforts, yes? Indeed. Let us enjoy ourselves as well. Come on, haven't we been enjoying ourselves the whole time? <laughs> in this world, the one who enjoys the most is the true winner. Come, let's have the Seven Sisters over here too. The Seven Sisters of Purgatory right here. I can't believe the game's finally over. Wow. What do you think you're doing crying at the after party? You little crybaby. Lord Battler, Beatrice Sama, thank you for the invitation. I want to see six-year-old Angie Sama's sleeping face and have it all to myself. <laughs> I want to see the food and have it all to myself. Yeah, not surprised you're saying that. Then I want a hot guy to have all to myself. <laughs> Why are you claiming to battle when you say that? Stop, thief. <laughs> Glad to see you, Seven Sisters of Purgatory. Enjoy yourselves. Oh, yeah, things do get much noisier the moment they enter a room. And what's so terrible about that? In fact, it still is nearly noisy enough. I knew it. Another gold cyclone rose up. In its wake, three people with bunny ears came into view. Chief Sisters and Piro goes right here. It's such an honor to be summoned to a gathering such as this. I haven't had nearly enough fun for it to end yet, yeah. <laughs> there, I agree with you. But fear not, for our game shall continue much longer than this. For eternity inside the cat box. Glad to have you here, Cheester Sisters. Lord Petla, allow me to express our deep gratitude for your invitation. In the future, we will endeavor to show even more... Ah, come on, don't be so stiff and formal. Tonight, we're all equal. That's right, yeah. Bell, I get it, yeah. <laughs> so stop it, 410. You're getting carried away. We'll get in trouble. <laughs> hey there, Reese. Long time to see. Wow, how long it's been since we had so many of us here. Not since Natsui's trial, right? And you could hardly call that a party. <laughs> That's for sure. It certainly was not a party. <gasps> if you're talking about a party, you'd better not try and leave us out of it. Dang, just how many of them are there? If they keep coming like this, there'll be more of them than us humans. You can come out now, Sakutaro. Adieu. Can we please also have all the goats? <laughs> Lord Bettler, oh, you're back. I haven't seen you in a while. It was an honor to receive your invitation. Let it be known that it is an honor. <laughs> hey. Glad you came. It's been a long time. How have you been? Very well, thank you. Fighting with you all is always extremely fun. I have had enough of stamping documents. Commander Leonard, now that your to-do box is piling up as we speak, <laughs> please make haste with the approval of our vacation papers. They are exceedingly important. <laughs> Sounds like living in the Great Court is as boring as ever. Lord Bettler, I fear I must bring you some sad news. Huh? What is it? Lander held out an envelope. It was one of the invitation cards that Petla had handed out for this night's party. The name of the card was Furudo Erika. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, you cannot believe how sad I am that she's not coming. It is the saddest day of my life. 
We did all we could. <laughs> the invitation was filled with stamps bearing the unreadable words of various foreign countries. Even without reading them, it was easy to guess that it had been returned to sender destination unknown. I see. Thanks for trying so hard. The depths of oblivion are like an empty, endless desert or perhaps the bottom of the sea. No one besides Lady Ben Castillo herself could find her location. I did send invitations to those witches too. Are you crazy? We'll have to hope they have the kindness to bring her along. <coughs> kindness. You just used the word kindness. With regards to Bancastle and uh, the other one, <laughs> she just forgot her name. <laughs> Are you mad? Lady Bancastle is just like a cat. She'll show up whenever she feels like it, but when she isn't in the mood, she'll never come no matter how often you call her. Uh, yeah, that kid's totally like a cat. Ah, uh, Lambda Delta, yeah. I should just call her Lamborghini Delta. She'll come to get her food, but she won't let you pet her head. Lamborghini Delta, so you came. Oh shit, she's actually here. Believe it or not, I'm a busy, busy person, okay? Still, I am Beato's guardian. Wasn't I your guardian too? Well, anyway, I came because it's my responsibility or something. Ugh, I happen to be in the neighborhood, so I stopped by. Hey, you, Goda. I've brought some presents. Could you just put these wherever for me? For someone who just dropped by because she was the neighborhood, she brought an awful lot of presents, which included colorfully wrapped bottles and food boxes. Grand Castle isn't here yet. You really think she'd come? She's not the kind of kid who just dropped by to say hi at games she's lost. Probably. After all, she's very proud. You... I think the word you're looking for is insane. I seem to remember her putting us through hell, but she's still one of the players in this game. I thought it'd be good to have her over to celebrate the final night of the final game. You're right. Without that kid, this game might not have reached its conclusion. Enemies and allies are the bare minimum you need for a game. True. Without a foe, there can be no game. At least I can enjoy defeat as just another part of the game. That kid can't. It's too bad, but she's been through a lot, so please don't blame her too harshly. Actually, I was planning to thank her. A lot of crazy stuff happened, but thanks to her we were able to make it to where we are today. Thanks. <coughs> I don't know when I'll see her next, but if I'm lucky I'll get my chance in a few hundred years. I'll let her know what you said. Not that she's going to care. Ah, uh, that's right. They don't have invitations, but I've brought two guests with me. Guests? Who? I'm pretty sure I sent invitations to all the usual suspects. Come on over, you two. I'll introduce you. <coughs> oh. Well, that's cool. When Lambda snapped her fingers, the empty air exploded and two forms appeared. If it isn't Willard. Hey, I see you're as short as ever. <laughs> yep. That's <laughs> pretty much what I expected from him. Not that I mean I foresaw this exact line, but pretty much expected him to say something rude. Now here are some unfamiliar guests. Who are they? Uh, don't pinch my ass. Shouldn't we be introducing ourselves first? I'm fairly certain that Betlacon and the others in this world don't know about us. You have the mark of the one-winged eagle on your clothes. Are you an Oshidumiya? My name is Oshidumiya Leon. In my world, we're cousins. Oh, true, he wasn't there. I'll introduce Leon. This is the successor to the Chidomiya family hatchet, born only in a world of extremely low probability. In that world, Jessica isn't an only child. She's Leon's little sister. Now there's a surprise. So there's a world like that. Wait, you couldn't be... Pleased to meet you, Beatrice. I know quite a lot about you. Seeing you smiling happily is the greatest joy I can imagine. I'm as glad as anyone else that you made it to this point. I see. So it's you. I'm glad you're here. Beatrice realized who and what Leon was. The two of them stared at each other's faces as though looking at their own face in a mirror. I wonder why. Willa's the name. I'm just a passing stranger who got caught up in a game you know nothing about. He is an inquisitor of heresy from the great court, like myself. A truly skilled one, though he is now retired. But why is your arm back? I see, if you're Glenor's friend, you can't be anyone bad. Please make yourself at home. Just where did these two come from? Pam brought them in and made them pieces. And chopped them to pieces. When she was done with them and about to crush them, I picked them up. Oh, I see. How I was said leaving them there would leave a bad aftertaste. Is that okay? If by chance Lady Bancastle just dropped by here. Oh, this game board, they're my pieces, okay? 
and I can't wait to see the look on that kid's face when she bumps into them in a place like this. I don't really get it, but you obviously brought them here for some shady reason. That's all for my gifts. I'll just hang around for the rest. I'm leaving the rest to you, the host. Come Lord Butler. If you don't announce it, we can't start. The start of tonight's party at the end of this long, long game. Ladies and gentlemen, your silence, please. Our territory lord, Lord Butler, has a message he wishes to convey to you all. Enough of that. It's embarrassing. Come on, it's a wife's responsibility. I'm not letting anyone else take it. Beatrice hooked and handed Butler a glass of champagne. Come to think of it, everyone had a glass on their hands now. Maria, you're a kid, so drink some sparkling cider instead. Yeah, I want champagne too. Hey Maria, so why don't we drink some sparkling cider together? Butler, our drinks are getting warm. Agreed. Begin, Butler. No objections, Auntie. This way, please, Lord Butler. Renault motioned towards the center of the room. When Butler stepped forward, everyone silently awaited his words. Glad you all could make it. This marks the end of my long game with Beato. I've invited everyone who's been a part of this game as a piece, a player, or a game master. I hope you'll enjoy this unending night to the fullest. Cheers. Cheers. Everyone raised their glasses to the heavens as they cheered, and afterward, the soft sound of glasses clanking together rang out across the room. Only I was apart from all that fun noise. Maybe that was what did it. Before I realized it, my cheeks were wet with tears. I was lying on the sofa, covered by a blanket. I can just barely remember getting sleepy and falling asleep in a chair. Someone probably carried me here. I can't actually hear them, but I get the feeling that everyone's still in the hall, having a good time. I want to go there too. No, I will go. Over there. It's what I've wanted all along, but I never took the first step. I'll go to where everyone is. My head still feels hazy, so there aren't any complicated thoughts in my mind. But that's okay. It's okay if my head is empty. I'll be together with everyone. I'll go to where they are. That's all that matters. I got up from the sofa and put on my shoes. Let's go. To where everyone is. The parlor door was shut. I tried to open it, but maybe because of my clumsiness I couldn't get it open. It was a bit creepy as though the bad dream I just had was still going on. <laughs> it won't open. Why? It isn't even locked. My mood grew darker and darker. The knob that locks or unlocks the door is on this side. If I twist it, I should be able to lock or unlock it. I turned it. The door won't open. Did I accidentally lock it just now? I turned it. The door won't open. If I d It didn't open the last time, so it should have opened this time. I don't have a clue how I'm supposed to turn it to unlock the door. I kept on alternating between turning the lock and roughly twisting the doorknob. I began to get irritated, wondering why they'd locked me away behind such an inconvenient door. Eventually I ran out of patience and pounded hard on the door, but that noise didn't bring anyone to me. Why am I locked up in a place like this, all alone? Everyone else is having a fun party right there in the hall. Let me out of here! At that moment, a cold wind blew past me. The wind rippled through my hair. Wind inside? I turned around to find the window curtain waving about. There was a sound like scraping or crying. At some point the double window had opened outwards towards the darkness. The icy wind that came through it told me that this window was the only exit from this room. Yep, that's a big nope. <coughs> huh? I suddenly realized that the darkness beyond the open window was glaring at me, and my heart leapt. A cute sound rang out. I finally understood. That sound was a cat's bell. The glaring emerald eyes in the darkness were those of a cat standing in the open window. Its pitch black, luxuriant fur left only the eyes visible, blending in with the darkness easily. Did the Yoshidomiya family own a cat? It has a bell on it, so it can be a stray. It's a cat someone owns. At any rate, the cat was standing by the window and staring straight at me. We all know who was just compared to being a, to, uh, to a cat. Who are you? 
Of course, the cat didn't answer my question. I didn't think it was a cute cat, but I thought it might be trying to tell me something, so I approached it slowly. As I did, the cat did an about face, turning its back to me. Then it turned its head to look at me, almost as though it was telling me to follow it, and it leapt down into the darkness, leaving the jingle of its bell behind. When I peeked out the window, I saw the cat waiting for me under the pounding rain. I finally realized, this window was the only exit out of this closed room parlor. The cat must have come to tell me that. The longer I keep standing around here, the longer the cat will have to wait in the rain. That's no good. It'll catch cold. I climbed up onto the windowsill and went out the window. The wind was strong and the rain was cold, but it didn't get as wet as I thought I would. I might have been in the mansion's shadow. When the cat saw that I was outside, it walked along the wall of the mansion as if guiding me. It quickly disappeared into the blackness, but every now and then it would turn around and set the bell jingling to let me know it was there. Eventually a window, with light seeping out, came into view. It was the window to the hall. When I peeked inside, I saw everyone having a good time. I couldn't hear their voices, but they were all right there. Open up! Open up! I pounded on the window, but no one heard. Maybe the window was really thick, or maybe it was just noisy inside, or it might have been so dark outside that it blended in with the darkness. In any event, no matter how much I hit the window, it didn't look as though anyone noticed. By this point, my loneliness was giving way to anger. Why don't you notice me? Why do you lock me up in that room all alone? Can't you find a stone and throw it? I've had enough. I'll get inside somehow and yell at everyone. When the cat realized that I had given up knocking on the window, it led me onwards with another jingle. But just where is this cat going? I know it's following the wall of the mansion, but that's not the way to the front door. The front door might be locked. I'm sure the cat knows the way into the mansion and is leading me there. Away from the light seeping from the hall, and towards the blackness lit only dimly by the lights in the garden, the cat and I continue to walk. Then, I found it. An open window. The cat stood below it and looked between me and the window as though telling me to go inside. Thanks, kitty. I'd like to give you some milk to thank you. Won't you come with me? When I walked closer to pick the cat up, it slipped away from my hands and flew into the bushes in a nearby flower bed. Then, as though it really had melted away into the darkness inside the bush, all traces of it vanished. No matter how much I strained my ears, I couldn't hear the sound of that bell. Suddenly the wind changed directions and the rain started to hit me fiercely. I can't stay in a place like this forever. I'll go inside. What room is this, I wonder? I climbed up onto the windowsill and entered the room. Then the window silently shut and locked itself. Uh-oh. Good, that saves me the trouble of doing it myself. That's your only reaction to that? You climb in a completely dark room, and for some reason the window automatically closes and shuts itself behind you. And your only thought is, oh cool, I don't have to do that myself. I'm pretty sure my thought would be, why the fuck did the window just close by itself? That's creepy as hell. But okay. <coughs> the room was completely dark. However, as my eyes got used to the darkness, I was able to make out a few things. It was a large room. There was a long table and many chairs. I was about to say, is it the dining hall? It was the dining hall. Perhaps because I realized this and relaxed, it quickly became hard for me to make out details. I surged blindly along the wall for the light switch, then finally I felt a familiar shape. Wouldn't it be annoying if I pushed this and the light didn't come on? In fact, it was nearly the opposite, and an annoyingly bright light filled the dining hall and made my eyes hurt. Are we gonna see a dining hall filled with corpses now? I slowly opened my tightly shut eyes, and then I saw the state the room was in. <sighs> I knew it. The dining hall was covered with blood. Here and there were humans lying on the floor. Then I realized that two of the people were my own parents.
Hey, are you having a great time, people? If anyone's not having a good time, we're gonna eat you. Yell and sing the praises of tonight's banquet. The hall was alive with a mingling of humans and the magical illusions who lived on this island. At first, everyone stayed with their own groups, too nervous to mingle. However, as time passed, people started to move around and both halves began to chat happily together. But they just never listened, do they? Leadership's important. You need a lead by ensemble if you want anyone to follow you. Maybe some subordinates are like that, but I've never had any success with ordinary methods. Anyway, you're done for if your subordinates don't take you seriously. It's important to scold people loudly, even for small mistakes every once in a while in front of everyone else. Yeah, you're probably an expert in that because you practice with your daughter. You can't do that, it'll just make everyone scared. A leader has to be an example for everyone to follow. If you really want to be a leader... Everyone listened intently to the Vegeta Lion's theory on leadership. This was after several rounds of drinks had gone by and everyone was unnaturally focused on the conversation. Kyria, why do you get stronger the more jealous you are? Don't make it sound so bad. If I want something, I will let it slip away. I always put that theory into practice. There's nothing more to it. Thanks for waiting, everyone. Even more food is on the way. Uh, butting in on the family party like this? But yet, while I hate to admit it, every movement of his is flawless. Just what sort of hotel did he train at? Too bad when Osama just happens to be totally perfect. But I still love Goda more. This one's been cooked just right. The seven sisters had blended into the party perfectly, and they were making things interesting. And yet many great mysteries are called masterpieces despite being shut down by Van Dyne's 20 rules. It's not like I'm trying to shut down anything. Mystery novels exist for the sake of your own amusement. If you have fun, that's all that matters. Okay, so Aaron recently told me that there actually exists a person called Willard Wright that was a real person and his pen name was Van Dyne and he wrote mystery novels and he came up with 20 rules. And that's probably what this Will is also fighting with when he fights for the truth. So I guess he's based on that. Just like, uh, like the Nox. Uh, yeah. Like Wurgy. Oh, here? Oh, there he is. Like Lenner Anox is based on, on Nox. And fights with Nox's Ten Commandments. Now that even the great wizard hunting right has gone quite soft. Whether it's literature or forms of amusement, generally accepted rules change with the times. It must be the same with mystery novels, yes? Everyone chimed in on Will's theory of mystery novels. There was no shortage of things to talk about. Yes, that's a fitting attitude for a beginner. However, at that rate, you never become a key player in your organization. But now that the regulations are always to be enforced, that's something my newbies to do. Don't forget that regulations and rules are pretty much guidelines for the new guys who don't know any better. You said it. You can't really call yourself an adult until you learn how to move outside the rules. You're still a kid if you let the rules hold you back. I can't stand letting other people do the work. I'm mammon of greed. I'll do all the jobs myself. That's some spirit you've got there. How much are they paying you for being a sister of purgatory? Come get a job at my husband's business instead. I recommend you personally. The humans and the illusions were now very much on casual terms. I see. So this is how it's done in the world of witches. Yeah, yeah, you've got it, yeah. Where we come from, you pour the tea onto the saucer, press your palms on the table, and slurp it up like a dog, yeah? What the hell are you teaching her? Who does that? And Natsuhi, what do you think you're doing getting tricked like that at your age? Get away from her, Satan. How can you be so rude to Natsuhi-san? Huh? Why are you crying, Satan? Was it too hard on you? Chisha 410, son. Please stop giving my pure and trusting mother such crazy ideas. Don't worry, it won't leave a mark. 410 started yelling about animal abuse, jumping around in circles and holding her butt. I wonder if there's a prince out there for me. I want to have some hot, passionate love. If I fell in love, if I fell in love, could I become a beautiful princess too? Of course. Love is a miracle power, a mineral. It grants you invincible strength. Is that the person who once claimed that love equals lust I hear? Indeed. It would seem she's getting her fill every night. Oh, damn. Shut up, you perverts. Bella is busy, I see. The circle surrounding Beata was always a lively one. Yeah, I know how you feel. 
It's only when we're given orders that we find meaning in our lives. I get nervous when I don't have any orders. Someone order me to do something or I'll die. You can't have that attitude. You've got to find your own meaning for your life. Quit your own path. That's right. Your resolve has to be certain and absolute, okay? Back when I was human, I lived like a daredevil all the time. Uh. A bit shakily, Lambda Delta started talking about her theory of life. Apparently, she also had her fair share of champagne. Guess I can turn the light again, the light on again. The creepiness is not here f for now. What a bizarre scene. Yeah, I guess so. Leonard Summer, would you like some more to drink? Something non alcoholic. After all, I am a kid. Oh, Shannon will do. Do you have a second? Betla came back into the hall. He was searching for a servant, and the first one his eyes met was Shannon. Of course, Betla Sama. Do you need something? Sorry, but would you mind lending me the key to the parlor? The parlor? I can't get you in with a master key, but why? Well, I was just wondering if Angel was asleep, so I went over there. The door was locked. Locked? After we carried Angel Sama to the sofa, we shut the door, but we didn't lock it. We didn't lock it? Oh, don't tell me that, Angie. She must have felt like she was being left out of the fun and locked the door from the inside in a huff. Silly kid. Shall we unlock it then? Yeah, if you don't mind. Sorry about the trouble. Bella and Shannon left the hall together. In the hall, Lambda Delta started suggesting that they all have another quiz tournament together. Apparently the Witch of Certainty would be handing out prizes. Everyone seemed enthusiastic about the idea. Smiling contently at the ensuing uproar, Batla headed towards the parlor. It really is locked. Shall I open it? Hmm. She was sleeping, so I didn't knock on the door, but if she locked it, that proves she woke up. Let's try knocking once. Betla knocked on the door and called Angie's name. However, there was no response from the other side. He pressed his ear against the door, listening carefully, but there was no hint of Angie unhappily throwing a cushion at it. She might have fallen asleep again after having a little tantrum. Could you open it for me? As you wish. Shannon took out her master key and unlocked the door. Then she stepped back to let Batla go through. Angie, I'm coming in. Speaking a quiet voice to avoid waking Angie if she was asleep, Batla opened the door. Then just as the door was open, a chilly breeze drifted by. The breeze, which felt like outside air, immediately caught the attention of the pair and they looked at each other. It could be seen at a glance that Angie wasn't in the parlor. The curtains on the wide open window fluttered about. Angie? Angie? A blanket lay crumpled up on the sofa. It sat there just as Angie had left it after waking up. The blanket was slightly warm. Clearly she had been here until a short while ago. Angie-sama? Are you there? She obviously wasn't playing hide-and-seek. Angie was nowhere to be seen in the parlor. Batla peered out the open window... Uh... Batla peered out the open window into the rainy blackness. So she slipped out the window in this rain and went... where? Do you think Angie-sama might have gone out the window? That'd make her one hell of a sleepwalker. She couldn't have left from the main entrance, so she probably doesn't have an umbrella. It was very hard to imagine a reason Angie might have for going outside in this weather. I have a bad feeling about this. This shouldn't be happening. I'm the game master of this game board. Yeah, I'm confused as well. Why doesn't he know about this if he's the game master? So why are we in a situation that the game master can't understand? A large bolt of lightning lit up the surrounding area for an instant, but I was unable to see any trace of Angie. Okay, okay, now it's my turn to think of a question. Um, okay, so you have a third of, ca of a cake, a quarter of a cake, and a fifth of a cake, all on a plate. It takes 30 minutes to eat one whole cake, so how much is left on the plate when you've finished eating? At that moment, there was a roar of thunder and the lights flickered. The cheery voices vanished in an instant, like candles being blown out. None. That's a riddle you were tricked with once, isn't it? Amidst the silence, one voice rang out and answered Lambda's riddle. I knew it. The crowd parted, and the form of a girl, a thousand-year-old witch, came into view. She had been invited. She was an official guest, holding an invitation to this party. Sorry I'm late. I was busy planning some festivities to liven up the party. As Ben Castle spoke, she looked around at everyone. 
Oh, and I thought you two were rotting away in the fragment sea. They're my pieces now. Pretty cool, right? <sighs> she stared at Leon Will with an unnerving smile on her face, but she seemed to lose interest. Where's Butler and Beato? I'm a guest, aren't I? Isn't there anyone to welcome me in? I'm here. We did invite you, but I didn't expect you to actually come. Way to ruin the mood. I see, this must truly be a miracle. Now that's an interesting way to put it. Why do everyone get so quiet? This is a party, right? Go ahead and be noisy, just for the hell of it. Or is you welcoming me with the silence part of some kind of joke? Now it's your turn. My turn for what? You asked where Bella was, so I told you I was here. Now it's your turn. What are you talking about? Did something happen? Angie's gone. Even I, the Game Master, don't know where she went. That's insane. Isn't this your game? That doesn't make sense. If Angie disappearing isn't a scenario created by Rattler, that means there must be another Game Master. Is that even possible? Oh yes, I was surprised myself. Just when I opened the game board to start a delightful game of my own, I found that Battler had started up this bizarre game at the same time. I never thought I'd be in a game with two Game Masters. In other words, you were admitting that you hid Angie away somewhere. It would seem so. After all, no one could introduce a scenario you didn't build except another Game Master. So is this one of those festivities to live, not the party that you mentioned? You all looked like you were having a blast with that quiz tournament, so I decided I wanted to join in. And you chose to hold Angie hostage for that purpose. You've got it. Battler, Beato, I want to challenge you to a game. You cannot refuse. Not if you treasure Angie as a little sister, that is. What do you want? Lambda and I made a bet about the game between you and Beato. I must acknowledge that I've lost. At least that I've lost to Lambda. Ben tries to act all dry, but she's way more persistent than she looks. So you're saying you lost to me, but not to Battler and Beato? It seemed as though Ben Custle might smile. However, she didn't. Those cold eyes spoke without words. Battler understood. He had played so many games against Beato. Those games had been a wordless message from Beato. So he knew. He understood. She wants to fight us. Is that it? She will be a fearsome opponent. But we can't back out. I know that. We mustn't let Angie become Lady Bancastle's plaything. Beato understood as well. She understood why Bancastle was asking for one final battle. I never thought I'd see Ban fighting openly like this. Do you find that funny? Why would I? Thanks. Lambda Delta understood as well. Before the tale of Battler and Beato ended, before everything was locked away in the camp box, Ban Castle would finally move from the audience to the stage. That witch, who had hidden off to the side of the stage, unwilling to come out into the light, would now show that she had the courage to step forward into the stage itself. As a friend, Lambda Delta showed that she understood Ban Castle's human emotions, which had given her this courage. Is there anything I can do? Please act as an observer for my game. Sure. If you promise that you'll release Angie if we take part in your game, that is. Of course. Without such a promise, we aren't obligated to go along with this farce in any way. You may not owe me anything, but you'll never see Angie again. In that case, you can enjoy being branded as a loser for the next few centuries. Beato, don't provoke her. This isn't a fight we can back down from. Indeed. Now that the hostage had been taken, their ability to negotiate had disappeared. <laughs> However, Lambda Delta was agreeing to become an observer if that would make Bancastle promise to release Angie. Unless she held Bancastle to a promise like that, the latter would have nothing to lose. To make this final fight Bancastle wanted her proper one, Lambda Delta made her agree to this. Of course, Lambda. I promise. When the game ends, I will release Angie. Don't make a fool of me, okay? When I get shamed, I never let go of the one who did it, until I regret it. Lambda Delta spoke in a soft, threatening tone, however Bancastle laughed lightly, as though the look on Lambda Delta's face was merely cute. I swear it. I swear it on our friendship. Phew. Lambda Delta whistled and grinned. Apparently this was the most reliable oath Bancastle could utter. <laughs> okay. Okay. Lambda Delta nodded, looked between Battler and Bancastle and spoke. By the name of Lambda Delta, which of certainty, I accept the role of observer, observer for your fight. Bella, Beato, you have no objections, right? 
Bella and Beato nodded at each other, then nodded at Lambda Delta to show their determination. I'm so glad we finally get to fight each other. I had a feeling I'd end up fighting you sooner or later. Since when? I'm not sure. It might have been before I even learned your name. Betla vaguely remembered her speaking to him somewhere in an unconscious world he couldn't recall. At the time it had sounded like she was giving him advice for his fight with Beato. But thinking back on it, there was a bit more to it than that. She might have been a cat fighting from the sidelines, too scared to go out into the bright sunlight. So I had a vague premonition that eventually we would stand opposed to each other on the game board in some way. She was also one of the players. Now at the very end as the game board is being put away, she's finally found the courage to step onto the stage. I'd like to accept your brave challenge, in the name of that courageous girl who was once your piece. I forced Erika to fight a duel, I wanted to win, and even more strongly I didn't want to lose. The fear of possibly tasting defeat tormented me, and thinking back on it I envied you two back then. Erika was a great piece of yours, and my rival. I won't forgive you for abandoning her in the end and burying her in the depth of oblivion. Just what do you want me to do? Apologize to Erika? Save Erika from the depth of oblivion and invite her to this party. Save Erika? I feel the same as Bettler. I don't. She was a piece who stood in opposition to us, but she was only faithfully fulfilling her role. There can be no game without a rival. She remains our enemy, but she's also an important friend to us. Even though you, she made you suffer so much. We fought a fair fight. The outcome may have, been changed, may have changed our fates, but now that we've dueled each other, we'll always be friends. You want to be their friend too, don't you, Baron? That's why you want a fair fight with them now, isn't it? Are you laughing at me? We aren't. On the contrary, we welcome it. Even though I've taken a hostage. If you didn't, you probably wouldn't have been able to come up onto the stage. There had been no need to take a hostage. Battle and Beardo had been more than willing to accept this final duel if Bancastle wished it. It was hard to make out anything from Bancastle's silent expression. Fine. What's well, fine? I'll release Erika from the depth. I'm glad you decided to do this. For someone as proud as Bancaster, forgiving the peace who had caused her defeat should have been nearly unbearable. Batla knew this, so he realized how much this bit of compassion had cost Bancaster. Bancaster snapped her fingers and a black cat slipped out of her shadow. I tossed her all the way into the deepest parts of Oblivion. It might take her a while to get here. It matters not. There's no danger of the food and drink running out. Go, kitty. Guide that kitty here. When she gave this order, the cat melted into the darkness, its bell jingling. I can hardly believe that you'd forgive Erika. I don't plan on forgiving her, so she's not my piece anymore. Anyone feel like picking her up? After all, you already picked up Leon and Will. Bancastle, you have my thanks. Okay, enough with the sentimentality. I've already had as much as I can bear. Sure, where will we have the game? As far as I care, we could have it here, with all the noise, or in the usual quiet spot. Lady Bancaster has already shown that she has the courage to stand before a great many people. There is no point in making her suffer any longer. Good point. Then let's go to the usual place. Any objections, Baron? None. Sorry, partygoers. We'll be heading out for a bit, but please continue to enjoy yourselves. Zippa, good food. Live live in this place up. When Erica gets healed, let's have everyone give her a warm welcome. <laughs> yes, Lady Lambda Delta, your wishes are a command. Now then, let us take her to the usual room, a fitting place for our battle of wits. When Betla snapped his fingers, space shattered. They were now in the smoking room of the witches, the place where witches had once debated, schemed and reasoned all they could. Ben Castle had been invited there once again, and the final game would now begin. Do you have a game prepared? Of course. I worked hard on this game and I'm pretty proud of it. So Ben will be the game master and Batla and Beato will be the players? I'm interested to see what sort of scenario Lady Ben Castle develops. We'll explain things with the blue truth and you'll knock those down with the red truth. Are we okay with those rules? My game will be a simpler one. It's just a quiz of guessing the culprit. I don't feel like trading red and blue with you. Oh? What kind of game will that be? Would you mind letting me have a look at it first? Ben Custer held her palm upwards, and a palely glowing fragment appeared there. Lambda Delta brushed it with her hand and shut her eyes. It 
see, it's a simple game, isn't it? You're right. It's much more straightforward than the mind games these two played in the past. This isn't even a game about witches and humans anymore. That's right. This is a game about humans. What a surprise. The game Ben created to combat Beato's fantasy is a genuine mystery. Please explain. It's extremely simple. You'll watch the tale Ben has prepared for you. There are several rules to it, but if you follow them as you read it through, it'll lead you to a single truth, in other words, an answer. So it's an ordinary mystery novel. I see. In that case, there's no need for combat between red and blue truth. In Beato's games, the argument had been about whether the story was a mystery or not. However, Ben Castle's game was a mystery. There was no need to argue over that from the start. I've even cut out the motive and the tricks. There's only one question I'm asking you. Who done it? What a simple yet fitting game to conclude our fight. Yeah, no cheap tricks, just a stoically simple game. This is a genuine duel. As the observer I say this, this game is made to be solvable. In other words, I guarantee you that it's a suitable setting for your duel. Ben, I know I keep on saying this, but are you really sure? Batla and Beto's relationship started because they both love mystery. I agree it's a pretty tricky scenario, but I'm not sure it'll be enough to stop these two. If my best tale can't stop them, then what comes will come. The important thing is that Lady Bancastle put everything she had into this game. You're right. Will that be enough to stump us? That's all this simple game is about. Thanks, Lambda. Thanks to you, we know that this duel will be a fair fight. You're welcome. I'm happy too. It will be an honor to witness Ben fighting this precious fight. I am also honored to have you as an opponent. Same here. I underestimated you. And I did it without even stepping onto the battlefield with you. Just thinking about it makes me want to vomit. So let me fight. Indeed. Show us what you've got. If I win, I'll be able to look down on you for real this time. And if I lose, I'll surely be reminded of the emotion I know I've forgotten. Indeed. Ben Castle, whether you end up winning or losing, I promise you one thing. What's that? When this duel is over, we'll be friends. I don't want to be friends with her. Hmm. Enough of that, please. The sentimentality is killing me. Lambda clapped her hands. A pleasant sound rang out. Will you be the reader, Baron? Or shall I do that? I don't need a reader. Huh? A reader, Miko, can use her own voice to embellish or distort the tale. Even if there was no cheap trickery in my game, by having a reader any amount of trickery could be added. Yes, that is true. That's another of the Game Master's privileges. I want to have a straightforward duel with you, so I don't need a reader. You can read this tale with your own eyes and ears. Are you sure? That means you've lost almost all of your advantages. Understood. You don't need a reader. We'll read the tale yourselves. If there's no reader, does that mean there will be absolutely no falsehoods contained in the narrated text? We're ready, Van Custle. A showdown over a genuine mystery without any cheap tricks. If you're gonna play fair and square, we'll challenge you head on too. Thank you, and I don't plan on losing either. No, no, no. That's no good, Lady Ben. Huh? She's right. If you're a witch challenging us with a mystery, you can't have an attitude like that. Yeah, it all, it's all useless. Ben Custer, realizing what Batla and Beato were asking for, snorted. Lambda Delta nodded at her, telling her to enjoy this final duel to the fullest. What were you expecting? A happy mystery chat between humans and witches? Come on, don't make me laugh. Let's see if your cheery mysteries are any match for the one I've prepared. Let's see what you've got. We wouldn't have it any other way. Yes, we'll accept your challenge, Lady Bencastle. Witch of Miracles. Alright, time to start. I, Game Master Oshirumiya Balor, and Beatrice, the Endless Witch, will be your opponents. Don't start crying when we wipe the floor with you. <laughs> Take this, here's my mystery. Bancastle took a fragment containing the game and smashed it against the table, shattering with a brilliant, shattering it with a brilliant light as the game scenario laid itself out. The curtain rose on the mystery Bancastle had created. It's almost eleven. Is this? Would it be better if I stop just now instead of getting into this? Or should I spend a few more minutes on... I'm not sure. I feel like this... 
might be a fitting point to stop. Kind of. No sound but that of the falling rain filled the room. It covered the tragic scene in the bloody dining hall. At some point, Angie had fainted and fallen to the floor. Now her consciousness was slowly returning, forcing her to remember what had happened in this room. So she reflexively averted her gaze even before the memory overtook her. Six bodies lay in the bloodstained dining hall. Strangely enough, as her consciousness returned bit by bit, the terrifying scene before her seemed somehow less intense. This time Angie was able to look at the six corpses well enough to make out who they were. Okay, I'm gonna save here. At least it's a tiny bit of a cliffhanger, because we don't know yet who the six corpses are. I'm also curious what exactly I have to I should expect from this now. Is it just gonna be a short mystery and then Battler has to solve it and then I don't know. I, I mean I still hope that we get answers for all the murders of the, all the previous episodes. So will this somehow lead to that? Or will all the murders in the question arc just never be answered? And we were supposed to only take what Will said and decipher it for ourselves and we will never get answers to why and how like Goda and Kumasawa hang themselves in, in episode 4 and still got shot or answers to the candy stuff. Will all of that never be answered? <laughs> I mean, it's about time, isn't it? And yet we still are not dealing with that. I, I wonder. Well. Well, I'll save it. And I guess that's it for now. And, um...